Welcome to the Defense and Airspace Report. I'm Vago Maradian in Norfolk, Virginia, where we're covering NATO Allied Command Transformations Chiefs of Transformation Conference, an annual gathering of transformation leaders from across the Atlantic Alliance. And we're talking to Abik Sambayal, who is the Director of Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning at Centrana. Perfect. Thank you. Pleasure I'm to gl be here. I'm glad, I'm glad <laughs> I got through that without following it up. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing, because you have a fascinating business model. Sure. Um, so I'll start by saying what AI is, right? Uh, there's a saying, if you have a hammer in your hand, everything looks like a nail. AI is actually that hammer that makes everything a nail, right? You can use AI to solve any problem. Uh, we have people using AI to detect cancer in patients. You can use AI to build your own fantasy league football team. You can use AI to detect uh, the signature of a submarine. So the whole idea with AI is as long as you have the right data or enough data, you can train AI to predict anything, right? Um, AI as an industry has evolved over the last decade. Um, the three key ingredients that you need to train an AI is a lot of data, a um, lot of complex algorithms. Uh, for example, deep learner is a big thing right now. And the third key ingredient is technology, hardware, GPUs, to be able to process all that data. Four or five years back, you didn't have enough data. Technology was expensive, GPUs were ex expensive, and you just didn't have enough algorithms or the right kind of algorithms to make predictions. All of that is changing very fast. Um, if you look at the commercial world, you have Google Home, you have Alexa from Amazon, they're all nothing but AI, right? Um, if you look at what has happened recently, Elon Musk, Space, uh, SpaceX, they have landed a rocket vertically back, right? That has all been done by the power of AI. As long as you have the data, the algorithms exist today, and the technology in terms of infrastructure, GPUs, processing power, all of that exists today, if you have the right data to train AI. The one thing that doesn't exist enough today is people with the skills to train in AI. So you need PhD in statistics, PhD in machine learning, basically people we call data scientists. You need data scientists to train AI and machine learning. So what we at Centrana are doing is we have taken that skill set requirement out of the loop. We have put the data science skill into a box. So what we have built is our platform called Deep Cortex, and the idea is any domain expert can feed data into this platform and train their own AI without needing a data scientist to support them, without needing DevOps people to spin up clusters of um, servers like on AWS and stuff like that. So the goal is how can you democratize AI today? And that's what we're doing. We are bringing a platform to the world that will democratize AI. We'll give, we want everybody to have the power to train an AI without having the money or skills like the Googles of the world, the Facebooks of the world, and the Amazon of the world that have literally you know, all the PhDs that can actually build an AI. So that's our mission. All right, let me bring them over here. You were moving away from me and I was uh, like... Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, tracking. all of a sudden, I fall flat. You know, I, I'm reaching up. Um, from that machine learning standpoint, um, you know, what what's the addressable market that you guys are shooting for, right? I mean, for, you know, as you're building this into your business model, it is a revolutionary concept. But what's the market, you know, that you're targeting? What's the price point? You know, is this a price independent? You know, are guys willing to pay? an enormous amount of money for this capability, a modest amount of this capability. What's the overall business model you guys are shooting for? Uh, so we're shooting for domain experts, right? So the idea is we want to build a platform for people who don't have access or the money to go hire data scientists. So by that very goal, we can't have a solution that's very expensive, right? Um, so the business model is um, if there are people out there like cancer researchers who don't have the data science skills themselves, nor do they have the budget to go and hire a team of PhDs to build AI for them. Can they use a platform like this by their own? So it is supposed to be not expensive um, and it is supposed to be targeted towards domain experts in any field. You could be a cancer researcher, you could be a geophysicist who's trying to figure out how much oil is there in this well. You could be a defense analyst, you could be a cyber analyst. The idea is 
I am a domain expert in my field. I know the problem that I'm trying to solve. The one thing I don't know is how to be a data scientist, how to write a code in Python. And we are taking that impediment out of you, right? So we're saying, here's a platform. You don't need to know anything about machine learning or AI. What you need to know is your domain. As long as you understand your domain, we will give you the power to train AI. And, and that's the goal that, that, that we're going after. And how long does it take to configure, train, build the right tool set for you? Like once I acquire this from you guys, I call Centrana and I say, hey, I want to get this a big, how long does it take for me to start using that tool set? Uh, well, the platform is pretty uh, simple to use. I mean, it's been modeled after Excel. If you know how to handle yourself in Microsoft Excel, you should be able to use this platform, right? So all it takes is for you to upload the data, do some feature engineering, and click a button, and you have a model. Now, how long does it take the model to train uh, is a function of different things, right? It's a function of how many uh, nodes or cluster I'm spinning up in the back end to process that data. So right now, our platform is a cloud-based platform. Now, the advantage a cloud-based platform gives us is scalability, right? On AWS, if you're running a deep learning algorithm, and I have a million rows of data that I want to train on, I could spin up 100 servers in parallel and do that work much faster. So, you know, it's, it, it's a function of how much money you want to spend and, and how much infrastructure do you want to spin up to do the job that you need to do. Right, and AWS, Amazon Web Services, of course. Um, talk to us a little bit about, you know, you're a 30-person company. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the Pentagon has been talking a lot about innovation and a focus on innovation. What are some of the challenges you guys find as a small company who, you know, even, even with the Pentagon that said that it's receptive to innovation, what are some of the challenges of growing in the kind of environment that you're in? Uh, I think we're, we're definitely uh, hearing the right signals uh, from DOD, from the Pentagon, um, from NGA. They have a lot of initiatives out there to reach out to commercial organizations, big and small. Um, so the intent is there. Uh, I think it, it remains to be seen how much of that intent is actually going to pan out. Right, so we are definitely, so we are based out of DC, we are definitely participating in a lot of these uh, channels uh, that the government has set up for companies like us to, to present our technology from the commercial world. Uh, and we're in the process of, of doing that. So I think uh, time will tell how, how much of that was just an intent versus execution as well. We're hoping for the best. What, what is the hardest part for you guys? Is it the regulations part of it? Is it struggling against the bigger companies that are, um, you know, trying to, uh, you know, as, as one small company guy told me, he goes, they're not really as much trying to partner with me as partner with me to get my technology off of me and then use it against me. You know, what are some of the challenges that you guys face? You know, without trying to be critical, right? I mean, that was yep. one person's yep. view. Yep. But but other small businesses have sort of expressed skepticism sometimes of, of larger companies and, and, their, and their intent. What are some of the challenges you guys face in this process of growing in a very dynamic, rapidly changing, you know, focus area of the market? Uh, I think um, well, AI and machine learning has its own specific challenges, right? I mean, AI and machine learning is the buzzword of 2015, 2016, 2017, right? So everybody says they're doing AI, right? So a lot of time it becomes how do you, how do you, you know, differentiate yourself in the noise, right? So you might be going against 20 companies that say they do AI, but their definition of AI is not really AI, right? So um, it's not just against big companies, but it's also against a lot of smaller companies. Uh, just because AI is a buzzword, everybody wants to get on that bandwagon. So how do you differentiate yourself and how do you make sure that you're very clear on what it is that you're doing? Um, the other thing is, you know, how ready is, let's say, DOD to understand um, AI. You know, there, there's a concept called maturity level, right? Technology maturity level. Um, we know what we're doing, we know what we're bringing to the table, but is the other party really understanding what we're talking about, right? So AI is kind of a new field, everybody's getting on the bandwagon, there's a lot of noise, um, and especially on the Fed side, um, I don't, I'm not very confident that they really understand what AI can do. So it, it, it behooves on us now to educate them as much as trying to differentiate ourselves from the competition. And I think that's a big challenge is educating. They don't know what they don't know. Right. So you're trying to 
show them a vision of a technology that they don't understand. So it's as much educating them first before actually showing them what can be done. And I think that's a challenge. Are, are regulations a problem? Uh, bureaucracy, paperwork, are those challenges when it comes to doing business with the Defense Department? Um, definitely. I mean, I'm not complaining, but if I compare it to the commercial world, yeah, those are... I guess it goes with, with working with the government. I mean, it has its own pros and cons, so right. I, I would definitely not complain if there are lesser bureaucracy <laughs> with the work that we're doing. Well, so if you were going to give advice to the incoming administration, obviously they're putting their team together, what would be some advice from a small co company standpoint on, you know, obviously this administration tried to make life a little bit easier for companies to try to get in, but obviously there's still a lot of regulation. What are some of the things that you would put as recommendations to the incoming team as they're making their plans? Uh, I mean, coming from an AI perspective, I'll say why not use AI to figure out what works and what does not, right? Um, I'm no expert to, 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 to tell you what is working and what is not, but hey, you can use AI and see what is working and what is not. As long as it's Centrana AI, right? Yeah, definitely, why not? <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> Abhik, thanks very, very much. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers.